Welcome back to the Swim of course, guys. In this lesson, we'll learn how to build the fungible tokens on 3DevNet. And here's the agenda. So firstly, we'll learn how to implement the fungible tokens using 3Coin. Then we're going to write some tests and build the fungible tokens on 3DevNet. And finally, we'll give you some security risk to consider. OK, let's start with implementing the fungible tokens. So firstly, we initialize by defining a module named SCC. Next, we import the necessary dependencies from the suite framework. We then define a one-time witness SCC and deploy it with an initial function. Within the initial function, we call the coin create currency method, providing the desired specification to obtain a treasury cap and also the metadata. Subsequently, we freeze the metadata to prohibit any alterations. And finally, we transfer the treasury cap to the transaction sender. OK, so here is how we're going to write some tests. Before we write tests, let's consider about it. So why we need to write tests at all? Because firstly, it is imperative for developers to write tests to ascertain that the function operated as anticipated and to minimize the risks. SUI also offers integration with the Move Testing Framework, facilitating the creation of unit tests for Move Code, akin to the test framework available for other programming languages. And for the test environment, SUI Move Test Codes have special annotations, test only, and also the test, to distinguish them from the actual production environment and the testing environment. So test scenario package is a special package which is used to simulate a runtime environment. A scenario can simulate a multi-transaction sequence and can be initialized with the sender address as following. So as you can see here, we we'll first initialize a mock sender address, then we we'll begin the scenario with that address. And after that, the sender can initialize another uh, transaction. And finally, when we have done all the transactions, we can clean up the scenario object. So here is the test for the mint. As you can see here, in the first transaction, uh, we take the treasury cap from the sender uh, by using the test scenario take from the sender function. So this is pretty like a cheating function. So we just take the uh, authorized row to do whatever we want. Then we mint 100 coins and transfer it to the address one using the treasury cap. And finally, we return the treasury cap back to the sender. And here is the test for the mint. So firstly, we take the coins from the sender. Then we check if the amount of coins is exactly 100, which we just minted. Then we take the treasury cap from the sender and burn the coins. After that, we're going to return our treasure cap back to the user. All right, so that's the code and also the test. Let's run it. All right, as you can see here, as the initial function to get the metadata, also the treasure cap, and we have the mint and burn function. And here is the test code to test the mint and burn function. So let's run them with the swim move commands. Let's run that with swim move test. So updating the dependencies, and then you should be able to build my module. After that, it should be able to run my tests. OK, yeah. So as you can see here, uh, it successfully runs my min number function. And that's how you test your module. All right, once the tests are passed, we can try to build and publish the fungible tokens. First, we should run the sui move build command. So let's run the sui move build by updating the dependencies, and then should be downloading and also building. OK, finished. Nice. Now let's uh, publish our, our module. So before that, make sure you have the enough test, test coins. So sui client publish and with a guess budgets say 
that should be enough. I think. All right, so updating the dependencies and then should be able to build my module and then publish to the to the devnet uh, efficient. All right, let's add more zeros here. Yeah, I mean, you can always just add more zeros and give more gas tokens to... Uh, all right, here we go. So that means we just successfully publish our modules on chain. Nice. So let's try to uh, view this transaction digest on the explorer. All right, so here is the explorer. Make sure to change to the devnets and then let's search for this transaction. Okay, as you can see here, so sender is our address. And then we have created the treasury cap and also the coin metadata. So let's go to the coin metadata details. All right, so coin metadata is mutable as we desired. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, as you can see, the ID, the decimal is nine. The name is three course coin and the symbol. And we didn't set the description also the icon URL. So that's pretty much everything we have set up in the code. And that's nice. We can also go to the details of the treasure cap. So the treasure caps owner is our sender address. And yeah, that's also what we want, right? Because we want the treasure cap to mint and also burn the coins. So now we want to call the mint function and note that mint function takes several parameters, including the treasure cap amount and recipient. So we should use a deployer address because it has a treasure cap. Okay. So here is a call to call the mint function. Basically you use a sweet main line, a sweet client call, and then you define the package with the package ID, also the module, and then the function and also the arguments. So for this one, this is a treasure cap ID. And then this is the amount of coins we want to mean and transfer. And finally, this is the recipient, which is our deployer address and with the gas budget. Okay, let's try to call this function. All right. So let's say this transaction digest uh transaction digest on the okay as you can see here so we successfully transferred a hundred three course coin to our address that is nice all right now we'll call the transfer function. So as we learned before, coin is an object. So we can use the sweet client transfer to transfer some coins to others. And so this is the command sweet client transfer. And this is the recipient address, which corresponds to the two. And the object ID is just your, um, your coin ID with a gas budget. So you should be able to find your coins right right below your address as we can see here so we have two objects one is 100 scc and the other is my uh which is a smaller amount of some test coins okay so let's copy the address here and then let's replace this address to the SCC address right there. All right, let's try to call that function. Okay, so it seems it has successfully transferred my coins to another address, which I don't know yet. <laughs> let's check that out. The transaction digest. Okay, so as you can see here, we have successfully transferred 100 SCC coins to another address. Okay, 
So we have seen several methods to interact with uh, uh, functions on chain. Now let's look at some security risk you should consider when develop the smart contracts. So when developing a smart contract, contemplating security risks is paramount. Here are several types of security risks associated with SWE. The first one is the logic issues. So contracts are prone to the conventional vulnerabilities such as access control and logic issues. It is cubement upon developers to uh, scrutinize and test their smart contracts to detect and mitigate these vulnerabilities. And the second one is the centralization risk. So this risk pertains to the suspect abilities arising from a high degree of centralization within a system or platform. It is vital to safeguard and address processing the treasure cap, and it wields the power to execute methods like mint or burn, which are capability incentive. And the third one is the met coin metadata not frozen. So in the case of fungible tokens, coin data is typically frozen immediately post creation using the transfer freeze object method. This ensures that it transforms into a shared immutable object, accessible for reading by any address. Okay, let's do some simple exercises. So you'll need to write unit tests for the join and split methods, and then write the on-chain commands to inter interact with those two methods. So you can pause here and try to complete the task or if you can't figure it out, you can just go back and check our exercise reference answer. All right, you can find the reference FT code by the move here. And that's it. That's the end of this lesson. I hope you have a good start with us.